Hello, uh, Mark Verena, and uh, I'm going to <clears throat> um, fix uh, an area in this painting that's been bothering me for a long time. This painting was done in 2014, eight years ago. Um, I'm pretty sure I painted it plein air most of it. Uh, I may have tweaked it in the studio a little bit. But, uh, this is out at Point Lobos on the uh, Cypress Trail. And uh, <clears throat> every time I look at it, I'm this large uh, area of the uh, cliff or rocks or whatever they are. Uh, it bothers me because the uh, mass of this is pretty similar to the mass over on the right side. Uh, even though the tree is taller, there's enough air and air holes in the tree that it is equal to the solid mass here. Uh, and the shape, the shapes are um, converging right down toward the center. It's like a, a drain. So I, I don't think those are good uh, composition uh, practices. So I'm going to change it. And uh, well, I think if I lower this, put more ocean. Um, I'll try right about there, take about almost a third of it down, and we'll see what it looks like. Um, no, don't, don't be surprised if I don't repaint the whole ocean. Uh, that's, uh, sometimes I do that, I start fixing an area and I end up painting the whole painting over again. But I'm going to try to resist the uh, messing with this side of the painting. I, I like the tree. It uh, works pretty good. Um, now I have a <clears throat> camera on my uh, palette and uh, I'm going to try to get uh, it's close to uh, get this. No. try to, to uh, get as close to this uh, ocean color as I can. Uh, it looks to me, uh, I probably used uh, Viridian and uh, Alizarin uh, and white to uh, get this tone color. Uh, the Viridian, um, is real evident there, and then the alizarin sort of it's a they're both cool colors, but they're complements, so you can get a, a cool gray with uh, those two colors and and white, of course. So, um, but I have um, recently added some Vasari colors. Uh, they they uh, put out these uh, mixtures, and they're not conventional uh, colors. They're they're sort of uh, custom colors that Vasari makes, and uh, they have sets that uh, they sell. And this is. This is off the uh, 
tonalist palette. And it's a um, set of eight colors. Uh, and they're all uh, sort of tertiary grays, uh, some warm colors like these uh, ochres and, and uh, taupes. And they're, they're I, I call them convenience colors. Uh, they, they, instead of mixing up this blue uh, over here, uh, they they just have it there, and uh, I I uh, experimented with them, and it's like a shortcut to mixing grays and uh, uh, warm warm tones, uh, and it, if you need to uh, remix a color with uh, it's much easier with these if you start with these uh, the sorry tonalist colors it's much easier to uh, match the color you know, because it's already mixed so uh, anyway <clears throat> I um, I've been experimenting with them. Um, this is a Vasari color. Uh, this Iowa. It's, uh, <clears throat> what is that? Really beautiful color. It's uh, orchid. <laughs> they they name the <clears throat> um, name them uh, exotic names. Uh, Sort of like house paints. Uh, this one is called Buff, and that's uh, sort of a, uh, almost like a flush tone, uh, a little grayer. And another one I like is uh, Shiprock. Which is uh, this color here, and it's a real, real uh, handy for when you're doing a road or dirt or whatever. Uh, and then there's some greens. Uh, this is called jasper. This color. And there's now phthalo green. Um, I have here instead of viridian. Um, it's very similar. Uh, oh no, I, I did use viridian. I have a viridian uh, Vasari color that I ordered separately. But th thalo green is similar. Uh, it's a little bit, I think, uh, might be a little bluer. Yeah, it's a little, little cooler. Um, maybe more transparent. Mm. Anyway, um, these colors are, except for the Viridian, um, they're they're fairly reasonable. Uh, these uh, earth tones and these grays, uh, they're they're pretty reasonable. You get into the <clears throat> cadmiums and uh, cobalts and uh, the price. Is pretty pretty pricey. Pretty pricey things. So um, I have some conventional colors: a lizard, ultramarine blue. Uh, 
Viridian, or I'm here, of course, white. So let's see if we can uh, mix up. How at night they're a little springy, springier than uh, these uh, rhetorics here. They're a little stiff. It's, uh, I, think they, I don't know what brand this is, but it has a little more spring in it. Um, so let's try uh, take a little viridian. And alizarin. White. The viridian is um, a lot weaker uh, tint than uh, the lizard. But these are both cool, <clears throat> cool primary, or cool, very cool colors. Uh, Viridian is a cool red and uh, um, the lizard is a cool red, and the viridian is a cool green. Bring this up a little bit. Try this a little phalo here. It's uh, it's a stronger tint than uh, the viridian. It's coming up pretty good. Um, during this period of the pandemic, uh, I didn't paint much outdoors. Uh, and then I had a run of commissions, fortunately, that uh, kept me busy for almost two years. Uh, I had about four large commissions, one right after another. Um, So I painted a lot in the studio. <clears throat> I'm getting out <clears throat> a little more, but uh, I found that I was uh, spending a lot of time mixing colors. And I think I learned a lot about color during this two years. So. being isolated in the studio. Um, and I really didn't mind the isolation. Um, I miss painting outdoors a little bit, but uh, I'd get out occasionally. But I find uh, my color uh, Mixing is, I'm getting really uh, particular 
and hopefully more accurate with, with the colors combinations that I'm using and mixing grades and uh, So I may spend about a third of my time mixing colors, values, and a lot less time with the brush on the canvas. Um, so I feel like I uh, gave myself a little education in the studio over the past couple of years about mixing colors. And uh, <clears throat> values too. A, bit, a, lot, a lot of landscape painting uh, depends on, on a lot on warm and cool your mixtures and uh, your values. They're really uh, critical. And when you're outdoors, um, there's, there's so much going on, so many distractions. Uh, it's a little hard to uh, focus And um, at least for me, uh, focus on the real fine, finer points of mixing colors. Uh, I know <clears throat> some people are really um, skilled at that um, and the painting show it guys like Matt Smith or Brian Blood. But um, I think I'm getting it in the studio at least. <laughs> so right now I'm just um, putting in a a gray tone. Um, yeah, I'm going to end up painting the, the whole uh, ocean again. I can feel it coming. That's okay. And uh, I'm going to move this crashing wave over to the right. A lot for me. Too much in the center, it just attracting too much tension. Oh, uh, <clears throat> So I, I've mixed up uh, a, a pile of colors. Um, I'll get the spotlight. There's a, <clears throat> a little bit of glare there, but... Um, I've mixed up a, sort of a graded pool of colors uh, from a little grayer to a little greener, uh, a little more violet. And I'll just work out of this cool puddle of colors. So the the um, 
color I'm applying now is, is not an exact match, uh, but it's close. Um, Let's see how far I want to take this down. Um, I can always erase what I'm the wet paint here. I can just take a paper towel and get back the uh, original since it's dry. But uh, I'm going to take it down. And I may raise it a back up. I think I'll widen this gap here. That's a little bit too dark. No, I'm not using a, a, a reference photo, so I'm just uh, creating there. Um, what just out of my imagination. Um, I found um, working on photos when I'm teaching and uh, doing these commissions. I really got slower um, because it. The, uh, the photo is constant and it, it doesn't change like it does outdoors and uh, you get hung up on uh, all the details and and I, I sort of felt like I was getting bogged down copying the photo uh, I realized I was getting bogged down and I was having trouble finishing finishing paintings. Um, so I think I get outside and uh, I'll get it a little more loosened up and uh, not be as Hung up on the uh, details, but this uh, this is a good way to avoid all those details. Just uh, paint from your imagination. I find uh, if I go out in the field and paint, uh, I'm out there for a, a few hours and uh, you get a, a real 
connection to what you're painting. And um, if you take that indoors when you work on the painting or you want to tweak it, sometimes you don't even need a reference photo. It's a detriment. In the, um, your feelings or impressions are much better to work with than a photo. You're a little freer. I don't like the way that. <clears throat> Wave <clears throat> ends at right at the tip of that branch. So I'm going to delete that tangent. I'm getting the feeling of everything slanting a little bit. So I'm going to level off uh, this wave back here. I don't even know if I need it. Still working off the same pile. Um, just kind of going back and forth uh, between Viridian, Alizarin, more fatal and blue, dark green, and uh, just so it's in white. Just so it's. Uh, Three basic colors, red, green, and blue, or red, green, and white. Uh, there, there's a good match. Yeah. And this top. And uh, maybe we'll make that wave a little darker.
this obviously was a kind of a gray day. Um, so there's really no that much warm light um, out that day, kind of overcast. And if you can paint, <clears throat> paint an overcast day, you can paint anything. There's no, no shadows and no distinct shadows. There's very little Highlights. Um, get a get a, a uh, more tonal. Colors can be um, intense because there's no glare, but uh, and I don't like that. That's uh, hitting the top of the tree. I'm going to add uh, a little of this vice color uh, from the Vasari uh, palette and see what, uh, what that does there. And this. Um, Horizon is so obscure because of the uh, overcast. The uh, there is no distinction between the uh, marine layer and the uh, water ocean. So they're really not a uh, distinction of, of the horizon here. And, uh, if, if there was, it'd be way up here. As I'm looking pretty much down from a uh, elevated view, this So. 
<clears throat> when I cooled off that uh, water up there, I, this upper part turned kind of a, a dull gray. So uh, let's see if we can fix that. It's not very attractive. Color kind of grab. Warmish color. So, <clears throat> vice color is um, it's really convenient color. I, um, or a a gray sky, or a twilight scene. Even um, I notice. In the evening, when the sun is uh, right about twilight, you get a uh, kind of a grayish blue like this, and then it turns to uh, a little more violet toward the horizon. And, uh, That's not looking very good there, but we'll, we'll fix that. This is the Bible. Orchid. And maybe we'll make that the uh, a little a little more violet uh, instead of that dirty gray color. And that'll distinguish just a slight shift from this. Overcast to the ocean. Let's see. The uh, marine layer should be a little bit warmer than the ocean color. I think I'm, I'm going to do that anyway. So in this painting, it is. A little straighter across and fix those edges. I always leave my edges so I'm These uh, YouTube videos are not short, and I ramble, and, but I, I, I like to uh, do the full, the full story. I think it's uh, good that you 
see the uh, whole process or know there is a, a process uh, and it's not something that you do in five minutes um, unless you you're a magician and I'm not so um I filmed the whole thing. And you can fast forward it. Um, but these fix it, so uh, like I said, I in the beginning, I I probably end up redoing the whole painting and uh, the whole ocean here. And that's what I'm doing. It's just I don't know if you can see this on the camera. But, um, just a slight shift from a warm to a cool right at the horizon. Just a very slight. Shift of temperature. Too blue. A little violet. Some nice soft edges on this tree. Um, probably be a little easier to paint, and the tree was wet, but I, I think it just uh, feather, feather, uh, feather the, or dust the top of the tree with a brush. It's so, easier. Soft, soft edge. And uh, let's see, let's get a nice soft uh, brush. This is a badger hair. Kind of a Soft bristle. I use it to blend. All right, I think that's that's funny. Uh,
So um, here's the palette now. A little hard to see, but um, this was the original mixture. And since I added the uh, orchid and the uh, vice, I'm sort of working off the side here for the, the top part of the painting. And uh, so now I'm just going to continue down and uh, I think the rock is, the, the, this shape is fine. Um, I'm not so sure about the values in here. Uh, I may mess around with the values. But let's go back up to the ocean and work our way down. I think I'd better put some fresh white on here. This uh, white is getting a little, little stiff. White's pretty cheap. Be level on it. These tonal colors are. Uh, very reasonable. Very reasonable. I think that uh, most of them are it's under fifteen hours or two. And they had me in the set. You don't always have to use white to lighten up the color of value. You can actually use uh, a maple yellow or a light lemon. Or this tonalist palette comes with this. Uh, Oh, so 
or Colonel Extra Tail. And this is a, kind of a fleshy. Pink tone, oh, very light. Okay. Let's, let's try that and just for the chicks. And get something really cool. Um, see where I'm... yeah, white um actually is the coolest color on your palette if you add white to any color it cools it off. Good. Yeah, that's a little too warm. Um. <laughs> So we're going to go back to the white that uh, warms it up a little too much. No harm in trying, but uh, that's how you learn. You just uh, play around. That's no glory. Let's say about oil paint, you can wipe it off. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's Watercolor, not so not so easy. You can Scrub off a little bit of water color. Never the same. I'm going to stick with the same one. Seems to have a better strength when you're using this alizarin. Alizarin to mix it with it. But, um, the uh, ratio to get a nice gray is uh, easier with the daylight. I don't know why one pigment has more tinting power than the other, but uh, probably has to do with transparency or 
strength, pigment strength. But I know a lizard is real strong. Tempting, staining. I'm pretty sure it's pretty transparent. They usually will tell you on the two whether it's transparent or not. not but Yeah, this is um, the lizard is transparent. So, but that doesn't just means that it doesn't cover well, but it doesn't mean that it's like uh, cadmium red, deep and cover. Um, more opaquely, but the transparent color will give you uh, better better mixing color. Uh, if you use uh, cad red with green, you're going to end up with a brown instead of a nice cool gray. So. Uh, The mixing qualities of transparent colors are a little more luminescent, I guess is the word. But, and the uh, opaque colors like the cadmiums are a little more opaque. And they they, they don't mix as nicely as transparent colors. If you want a nice vibrant violet, you, you don't want to use uh, uh, add red. You get a nice opaque maroon. Usually the um, when the water breaks, uh, there's uh, this aqua color around it, um, the churned up water, and I guess uh, there's uh, more. air bubbles in the water uh, when it's churned up and it uh, allows the light to uh, disperse between the uh, bubbles and it comes out aqua and that's uh, Beautiful color.
Lighten this up just a little bit, this layer here. Just a little addition of the uh, green makes that a nice, nice color for right here. It's a little more harmonious. So um, that looks pretty good. Um, a little little more of this pattern here that Kind of a device um, needs your eye. Um, now this I think can be a little warmer. Let's see. This is a, like a foamy trail of uh, white water. Uh, it's usually discolored a little bit. And it, it's just, uh, I think I'll 
That's that's better. Um, So all these little uh, devices um, to lead your eye around the painting. Uh, lead you off the painting, uh, lead you into the painting. I don't know if that looks a little too contrived or what, but then I'll, I'll assess it a little later. A little later on. Now down here toward the bottom, I'm gonna uh, make this a little darker. Try to get a little feeling of uh, the uh, waves, uh, the water surface that's not flat. It's kind of uh, ripples in the water, not too much. And then down here, uh, even darker. But we we'll want some white water. Anyway, um, it's going pretty good, and I'll um, I'll repaint the rocks here. Um, if I do, maybe I'll do a, another video of that. Um, I, don't, I really don't have a plan for that, but um, I might need a good reference for uh, something to look at you know, for the rocks. So, okay. So, um, I've reworked uh, the water pretty much. Um, started using my Vasari uh, colors more and more, and uh, especially in this area. Um, 
the vice and uh, the phthalo green. And uh, I changed a little bit of this pattern in here. Uh, did a little more broken color in through here, brightened it up. Uh, <clears throat> now I'm just uh, dealing with this rock. Um, I painted it once and uh, over once, and I didn't like it. Uh, it was too dark. So I lightened it up a little bit with uh, a brown. So let's see. Uh, I'll just sort of play around with this. Uh, when, when it's overcast, you normally have uh, warmer shadows and cooler light. Um, so this is um, like a burnt sienna. It's uh, another one of the Sorry, colors, but it, it's uh, I don't know what the French anthracite. <laughs> so, uh, it's very close to uh, burnt umber. And um, it's sort of a, it's a warmish gray and maybe it's a little cooler than uh, the uh, standard umber, but um, and then the top color uh, is uh, this uh, French anthracite with uh, I think it's a, the chip uh, rock, it's called chip rock, this color. And uh, without a reference, it, it's a little little uh, like. I have to group around <clears throat> and uh, find a find some good shapes here. Um, I don't want to make it too busy. Um, so. Just using a nice big brush. This may take a couple tries, and uh, I can't can't work on this much longer. I have to go to bigger drawing. And the dog has to go out, uh, but I'll just uh, make some marks here and maybe leave it. Let's 
assess it a little later on. Um, I don't know if I'm a very good rock painter, but uh, I think I'm better at oceans than I'm rocks. It's got some possibility. These rocks aren't too bad over here. I don't like to get um, all these darks pretty much connected. Uh, otherwise, uh, it get, gets busy. Um, be darker down at the base of the rock. Uh, it's usually where the water keeps it wet. And then there's probably uh, going to be some kelp, or not kelp, but uh, Some kind of moss or plant life that lives um, in these tidal zones on the rocks. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> this is just a little less bright. Just try to try to just get some planes that are catching the light and the uh, and some planes where they're not 
They're facing in the opposite direction. Um, we'll add a little coolness here. Um, because the light's cool. And this is The lightest part of the rocks would probably be uh, the surfaces facing up toward the sky. But, uh, I don't want to get too close to the ocean color because then it gets confusing. So this is just the uh, Cool gray. And that seems to be working pretty good. Using a flat brush because um, I want the planes to be sort of angular. Um, they're a little more dynamic that way. Um, yeah, this is uh, Maybe can I add just a little a warm, slightly warmer areas. These are pretty vertical planes, so they'll be um, be pretty dark vertical planes. And maybe just a couple horizontals here. And
trying to get the um, all the darks connected again just to uh, make it easier on the eye. Not so busy, scattered all over the place. Even this uh, suggested su suggested um, crevice where it was broken, uh, that line is broken. Is that, that's a nice element. And just some accents. Um, So I think I'll uh, leave it at that. And uh, we'll look at it tomorrow. And I think that's looking pretty good. Let's get this a little softer. That shape is <laughs> a strange uh, shape. Okay. If I just start from the bottom of it here, like the place on a flat rock projecting out. I don't want anything that really too strong out right in that little section. It's sort of just to unnecessary. Uh, Element. All right, that's uh, that's it for now. And Yeah.
a painter, you'd have to be a marine biologist and a geologist. And... Biologist. Okay, that's it. All right, we'll uh, put that on YouTube.